Welcome back to Proxam, everybody. And today we're going to be talking about a slew of leaks that were posted online having to do with the upcoming 10th edition rumors. So as many of you know, 10th edition is pretty much around the corner. It's stated to be coming out sometime during the summer. So these leaks were basically confirming a couple of dates and also talking about some of the changes that GW is going to make when they release the new edition. And for many of those that have seen the leaks online, you might start to think just by looking at them that a lot of them seem really game-changing and, in honestly, a few cases, game-breaking. So we're going to go ahead and take a deep dive into those leaks and see how they affect the Craftworld Eldar and the game in general, if they are indeed true. Which, obviously, they are leaks. They may not be, right? And that's something you always have to keep in mind going forward when looking at any kind of leak or you know, rules that have been released early and stuff like that. So without further ado, let us go ahead and dive right into it. So a quick overview of the video, we're going to be looking at a list of the leaks and their validity. We're going to be looking at which ones would specifically affect the Craftworld Eldar for good and for bad. And we're going to be looking at should we be concerned as a community for the upcoming edition change. So here is the Reddit post that was basically leaked online with the list of changes. Now, there's a lot of changes here. You can go ahead and take a look at them if you want to. Pause the video and just take a long look if you haven't looked at them already. Zoom in if you can because I know the writing is a little bit, well, a little bit small. So you might have to zoom in and full screen this. But there's a couple of changes that specifically come out to me. And that is that the command phase and psychic phase are going to become one, basically one in the same phase. So psychic phase will no longer be one of its own phases. It will happen before the movement phase, which has a lot of implications for a lot of different armies out there. Of course, probably more so for Eldar because we rely heavily on psychic powers. The other change that I saw was that there seems to be, for a lot of the units out there, no more wound roll. So essentially what this means is that most units are going to roll to hit against you and then you're going to get saves. Basically, GW is simplifying the rolling process by cutting out the wound roll altogether. That's another thing that I noticed about these leaks. I also noticed here, and not a lot of people are talking about this specifically, but there's a change here that states that GW will be focusing on quicker and more terrain-focused games. So that means terrain is going to play a lot more of a role in the 10th edition than it is now and i'm not exactly sure what is meant by this because it's a little bit vague but my premonition on this is that they're going to require boards that have a certain amount of terrain on it it's no longer going to be optional and completely up to the player or the tournament organizers to how much terrain is on a board there needs to be and is going to be a required amount of terrain at a minimum level on every single table and furthermore, there might be specific requirements for having certain types of terrain on boards. For example, obscuring terrain, if there is in fact still obscuring terrain in the new edition, they might say that it you need to have at least four pieces of it on every board minimum, right? And you could also obviously have more maybe, but there's a minimum amount of terrain that you need on each specific board that you play on. And to be honest with you, as an Eldar player, I think this is really cool. And I think it's something that the game really does need. Because certain shops, honestly, I don't know about you guys, but for a long time, I was playing with a group of gamers in 5th and even 4th and maybe even the start of 6th edition who really just did not like terrain. They were terrain phobic. They did not want to play with terrain on the board. And oftentimes you'd get these really massive gunline armies fighting against these assault armies and it would just be awful. Because there would be absolutely no place to hide. So because of that, I think if you required terrain in the rulebook and said, yes, to play a standard game of 40k, you need to have at least 50% of your board covered with terrain or something like that, right? You know, you need to have at least 13 pieces of, you know, medium sized terrain and they could give examples of what that means. I think that would be a great thing to do in the game and much needed in my opinion. Other than that, there's a long laundry list of basically new releases from the 10th edition starter box which will feature according to this dark angels and tyranids 
two new Votan releases, which will be kind of interesting to see what new models come out for them, and the release of a new Xenos faction, which will probably be something chaos related if I had to guess, but we'll have to wait and see on that. The problem with this is that I don't see anything going over Eldar. So it doesn't seem like there's any Eldar releases. And based on my reading of this, unless I missed something, I don't see any Dark Eldar releases either or anything for Yanari or Harlequins. So unfortunately, if you were one of those players that was really looking forward to seeing more plastic kits of Aspect Warriors and things like that, things that Craftworld Eldar desperately need, things that Dark Eldar desperately need. I mean, you know, for example, Grotesques, you know, people can't even really feel the Grotesques because they don't have official models right now and stuff like that. So I think we have to hold our breath for a lot longer. And I actually would not expect to see any kind of Eldar releases other than the bare minimum slated for 2023. I think maybe 2024, you can expect something Eldar related, but definitely not until the next year, which kind of sucks, right? Because we do, as a faction, Dark Eldar and Eldar alike, really need new models, desperately. Especially Craft World Eldar, we have some of the oldest models in the game. And don't get me wrong, I love playing with my single pose warp spiders that all look the same and all have the same exact look, except for one model, which is slightly different. And you guys know what I'm talking about. There's it's it's kind of funny. In the warp spider set, there's the Exarch. There's basically every other model looks exactly the same, except for one model that is has its feet slightly more together kind of like he's almost tripping and falling over so yeah we do need new models obviously but i don't think we're going to be seeing them for some time soon so if you guys are waiting to you know buy new plastic kits you're going to have to wait probably another year for that anyway so which leaks actually would affect the Craftworld eldar directly right so i think there's two leaks that really affect the Craftworld eldar more directly and that is losing the wound roll and losing the wound roll actually i think would probably benefit the eldar as most of our units are really wounded rather easily basically on three plus anything with strength six or higher is wounding on two plus and there would probably be some sort of trade-off for these quicker units so what i'm guessing gw is going to do is for faster units like eldar like demonettes things like that to offset the fact that they no longer get to roll to wound against you, they're going to give you some sort of minus one to hit or some sort of modifier to hit. So, for example, if an enemy unit needs threes to hit, they might need fours to hit against Eldar units and Dark Eldar units, for example. Now, I don't know this. This isn't confirmed or anything like that. I just think that there probably needs to be some sort of way of balancing that out. For example, really heavy units like Terminators and tanks and monstrous creatures and stuff are still going to have a wound roll in this 10th edition, according to these leaks. So for really fast units, I feel like there needs to be some sort of trade-off there. And I think the trade-off was probably going to be a negative modifier to hit from shooting in combat or maybe just shooting. I don't know. But this could really benefit the Eldar if it is in fact true. And honestly, even if it's not, I don't think we lose much by just basically enemies being able to roll to hit against us and then us rolling our saves. Because <laughs> honestly, they needed twos and threes to wound anyway, so I just don't see there being much of a difference. I actually see this hitting things like Death Guard and tough armies like that a lot harder than it is going to hit Eldar. And factions with, you know, models that aren't so tough. The other thing that's going to affect the Craftworld Eldar is the fact that the Psychic and Command phase are coming together and being combined. And I think this is going to really interfere with us casting Psychic powers on units in transports, on units that are coming from reserve, and would be too far away to cast that turn. Now, although I think this is kind of detrimental to our casting power, I actually don't think it's so bad that we can't adapt to it. And let me give you an example. In 5th edition, you needed to cast your psychic powers before you cast any other abilities. So basically, at the start of your turn, you would cast psychic powers. And this meant that you obviously would not be able to cast on units that were coming from reserve and stuff like that. Because if I remember correctly, reserves actually came in after you cast your psychic powers. I may be wrong on that. If anybody remembers 
rules from way back in 5th edition. I don't think you could actually cast on units that were coming from reserve. But, you know, I could be wrong on that. But basically, you had to cast Psychic Powers at the start of the turn. And I think if they return to that, it's not going to take much to adapt to. It will mean that, you know, units and transports, if they don't make some sort of exception for them, are going to be a little bit less effective coming out of transports on that turn. It does mean that. It also means that units coming from reserve aren't going to be as effective because we can't put guide on them and stuff like that. But it doesn't really affect a lot of our malediction powers. Things like doom, things like jinx, right? We can still cast these on enemy units. And if the leak about more terrain is also true, we're going to have an easier time staying alive, being behind terrain, being able to hide easier so that we can cast those psychic powers more easily in the command phase. And again, there is very possibly, if these leaks are true, going to be a hard reset on every single codex in the entire game. So what that also means is that we could very easily get rules that mesh better with these changes. So instead of having an 18-inch Doom or an 18-inch Guide, we might have a 24-inch Guide and a 24-inch Doom to kind of ameliorate the effect of having Psychic Powers effectively reduced in range by not being able to move before casting them. Which I still think would make it a lot harder to cast Psychic Powers effectively on some units. It just, in general, would. But we have to see what other rules are surrounding it. Because if there are no other rules surrounding it and it's just this, yes, it's going to be a lot harder to get off psychic powers. But if there's some changes to it, if they increase the range of psychic powers, then it could be a different story, right? So we're really just going to have to wait and see on that. And of course, having more terrain, like I said before, is only something that could greatly benefit Crawford Eldar players because we already love using terrain to our advantage, using battle focus, which I don't see going away, honestly. I mean, maybe it can, you know, knock on wood. <laughs> I don't want it to go away. None of us do. I think it is really unique to Eldar to have something like that. But, you know, if it does go away, that would be a shame. But at least at that point, we would have more terrain to be able to hide in the first place. But again, I really don't see Battle Focus going away. So having more terrain to play around with is always a great thing. So should we be concerned as a community for the upcoming edition changes? Now, I don't really think we should be. And I know a lot of people are kind of freaking out about these leaks and they've had some very negative reception so far. But I don't really think we should be freaking out about it. And here's the reason, right? There's a couple of reasons here. One, I think more terrain and smaller units is great for Eldar, right? We already use small units. They're our most effective way of fighting in the fighting style that we like, which is a very hit and run based style that, you know, we hit hard, but we use our you know special abilities and movement so that we can't be hit back. Having more terrain as well helps with that. The wound roll loss I don't think is going to affect Eldar as much as the tougher factions. It might even be better if faster factions are harder to hit as a result. Like I said, maybe giving a minus one to hit to units that are very quick. And lastly, I mean, the combined psychic phase could be an issue, but again, this is not new. Previous editions had this as well. And we don't also have all the information regarding the command phase and the psychic phase and what is going to be allowed and what psychic powers or how psychic powers are going to work going forward. Whether or not they're going to have an increased range, we just don't know that. So in conclusion, even though the leaks look very problematic on the outset, I think GW has a record in the last few editions of making the game simpler. And all those simple changes weren't popular at the time, by the way, until people started playing. I remember when they changed vehicles over from a damage chart to a wounds characteristic, and the fact that bolters could now, you know, damage a land raider, right? A lot of players in my community were laughing at that and saying that that was a horrible change and that that was so unrealistic and that was terrible and that this was going to ruin the game and stuff like that. You know, all the fear mongers out there that, you know, all the downers and stuff like that, that basically looked at the rules and thought that there, it was going to ruin the game or something like that. And I Honestly, they haven't. And if anything, they've made the game better. I, for one, liked the change to wounds from a vehicle damage chart because it made the game a lot simpler to understand. And also, by the way, it made it a lot more balanced, right? 
you could no longer kill a vehicle with a single last cannon. It was now impossible to do that. Whereas before, if you got really unlucky, you could lose all of your tanks in one turn to one really good roll of shooting. And now that really can't happen as much. So I do think some of these changes to make the game simpler has actually also made the game more balanced, right? And another example is a change they did to the ballistic skill and how ballistic skill works. A few editions ago, your ballistic skill was basically placed on a chart and that chart was compared to what you needed to hit. And same thing with weapon skill. So if you had ballistic skill five, you were hitting on twos. If you had ballistic skill four, you were hitting on threes and so forth. That was kind of hard to understand, right? Because a player had to go all the way to the chart, a new player at least, to look at their ballistic skill and then see what you needed to hit with that. And then if you had ballistic skill of higher than five, you got a re-roll and honestly, it was just very complicated for what it needed to be. And same thing with weapon skill. You would have to compare your weapon skill to the enemy's weapon skill on a chart and determine what you needed to hit that enemy. Is that realistic to what you need to hit? Yeah, absolutely it's realistic, right? I can't see a guardsman hitting a witch, for example, on a 4+. plus. <laughs> right? I mean, witches are so much better in combat than guardsmen. I would think that they would be able to dodge very easily and stuff like that. But taking realism away for a second and just looking at what would make the game more balanced, I think that things like this are generally good for the game, right? And if we take away the fact in this, in this leak that they're going to take away wound rolls, I think as long as they integrate it effectively, I really see no problem with this. So what I mean by that is a you know, Death Guard Space Marine, Plague Marine, I should say, shouldn't be as easy to kill as an Incubi, right? Should be much harder to kill a, you know, Plague Marine than an Incubus. But as long as they are successfully able to do that, then I don't think there's anything to worry about. And I think the changes will be relatively easy to adapt to. And lastly, something to take a note of is that these leaks are also by the looks of it, prototype concepts that are right now under development so that means that they may want to introduce these concepts to the book but it may not look exactly the same in its final form right we just don't know the complete rule set yet so we can't really make any judgments on whether or not this is going to be op or this is going to ruin the game or anything like that and i don't think it is right and I think also that GW has been kind of more sensitive than it has in the past in dealing with balance issues and dealing with rules problems. Because I don't know if you guys remember this, but, you know, in third and fourth edition, GW was really hands off with the rule book. And sometimes there would be rules that were broken for entire years before changes were made. So I think the fact that GW is more on that now means that we can relatively say with a little bit of peace of mind that if there is a major problem in the 10th edition rulebook, that problem will probably be fixed in a matter of a month, right? I'm sure they're going to get to that because, again, they want to sell things. They want their game to work. So if their game's not working and there's stuff that's super OP and stuff that's super underpowered and all that, they're going to want to change and fix that so that players are buying their models. So, yeah, basically, I don't think there's much to worry about. The new edition is still five months away and there could be many other changes that are coming out within those months. So we're just going to have to wait and see, kind of be patient a little bit and just kind of see how the rules unfold as they come. All right, everybody, that's going to be it for today's video. I just wanted to do a quick video covering the leaks because I thought that maybe some of the people in the Eldar community might be a little bit worried about them. But honestly, so far, it doesn't look to be too detrimental. I know that the psychic and command phase combining seems a little bit odd to some people and seems that, you know, like that would mess us up a lot. But we just don't know the full picture yet, right? So that's going to be it for today's video. Peace out. I have a video upcoming on Shroud Runners that's going to be coming out in a couple of days. Stay tuned for that. And I will see you guys next time. Have a good one, everybody. And as always, leave a comment in the comment section if you have any questions or concerns you want to bring up about 10th edition or what you think about the recent leaks and as always i do have a patreon if you do want to support the channel a little bit further i will leave the link in the video description all right everybody peace out have a good one and hope you have some good games see you guys later